Hey everybody, it's your girl Hita, and I'm back for another episode of Hita Talk. So I'm like Oprah. Uh, if you're ready to be inspired and empowered by a very colorful Wonder Woman, I suggest you stay tuned because we have the recipient of an amazing grant. We have someone that's been in City Pages, someone that's on the board of who knows what. Just wait until you listen to see what she has. So keep on watching for some amazing conversations. Good. I'm so happy you're here today. Yeah, me too. Okay, so we could talk about a ton of stuff mm -hmm. because you have your hands in a lot. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you've done a few things. Let me get my I'm notes. already getting stressed. I'm like, oh, I no. do too many things. <laughs> well, we'll add some more tasks to your plate today yeah, if you perfect. feel like you need more. You've received the Artist Initiative Grant yeah. from Minnesota State Arts Board, girl. Yeah. I'm just going to review your resume for you in okay, case you perfect. don't know. Yeah. Um, artist, my memory. artist of the Year in City Pages 2016. Mm -hmm. You're a drawing teacher. You're on an advisory panel. You're on a you're a board member for Minneapolis Art Lending Library. Oh, yes, you organize the Midwest Mixed Conference yes. and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, you've yeah. painted me and my family too. I have twice. So yep, I'm in the midst of it. Girl, we'll dive in a little more. But like, how did you get yourself started in all this? It's crazy. I've always been kind of an overachiever because <laughs> I feel like yeah, bad. Like, you think <laughs> just a little bit. Um, no, I I don't know. I've always been like super self driven, um, and even as a kid, I was always doing a bunch of things. You know, in clubs, um, all the sports. You know, like just everything. I just oh, like interest. not nightclubs, but like school oh, after yes, school clubs. Yes, I said as a kid. <laughs> I mean, that would be, that would be, I'd be a really cool. I person. mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm not judging. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, I was, yeah, I was just interested in a lot of things, but I was always interested in art. You know, the other mm -hmm. things kind of came in, came and went. Um, another passion of mine when I was younger was dance, but yeah, art like kind of like came to the forefront, um, especially in high school. And uh, I grew up in South Minneapolis. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm, na I'm native to the state. Uh, what school? Yeah. You've done a lot of amazing things. BFA, MFA. Yeah, so I went through um, the Minneapolis public school system. I graduated from Southwest High School. And then um, uh, I got my BFA from the University of Wisconsin-Stout. So I did live in Wisconsin for four years. That's cool. Four long years. You've been on that side Wisconsin. of the river. <laughs> Four long years. <laughs> uh, luckily, Menominee is pretty close. So, like, that's an easy drive yeah. back. Yeah. Um, and uh, then, yeah, I got my master's pretty recently, um, 2016 from MCAD. So, yeah, that's yeah, when I graduated from MCAD. It feels really recent. I guess it was two years ago, but it, it feels... Officially two yeah. years ago, but um, it's not like you've been busy or anything. No, no, I don't do anything <laughs> at all. Yeah. So no. from all the stuff you've done, do you still dance while you're like doing art? You know, I sometimes studio? do. It's really interesting. Like painting is, especially with how large my, my paintings are, it's very like movement based. You know, like I'm all like standing on a bench and then I have to like crouch real low. And there's definitely like a lot of movement involved. Wow. Um, well, what kind of um, art? There's so oh, much yeah. different art. I should, yeah, I should explain that. I could ask that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm a painter. I'm an oil painter. I'm a figurative painter, and the people in the paintings are pretty close to life size. So that gives people like a sense of scale. Um, sometimes my paintings are a little bit smaller, but the people would still be almost like a one-to-one -one ratio. Oh, my gosh. So we first um, met through the internship that I once had at Jungle Red Salon. A yes. spot gallery, and we had you as a featured so artist. That was so long ago. That, that's, that's actually how we met. Four or five, something like that years ago. But you were a yeah. featured artist, and everybody loved your work. I mean, that's, yeah. the gallery was full, and yeah. it was like... Those paintings were ginormous. They're yeah. real people yeah. with, like, your material, and the diversity was the most beautiful thing I could have ever mm -hmm. even anticipated on. So talk about 
your subjects and why you pick the people that you pick, AKA my family. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I've already so said that happy. three Thank times. Thank you for letting me. Like, that's like hard, you know, to Aww. to just like, you know, allow yourselves to like be be exposed, you know, in that way. Yeah, um, so I'm sure it could be it. nerve wracking for some people. It was. Yeah, totally. Photography yeah. and intimate sessions like that can be really nerve wracking. Well, you never know what photo I'm gonna pick. You know, like I take hundreds, if not thousands of, of photos to work from. Yeah. And I was like, girl, you couldn't have painted over that roll over there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you're not the first person to like ask me to idealize there, and I'm like, no, no, I I paint realistically and like I embrace and the curves, everybody, all the beauty and all of that. Um, my subject matter is is pretty wide. I focus on a variety of things, but it's all all pretty much related to identity and representation, um, and and race is definitely um, a major component of that. Um, yeah. But just kind of representing a variety of different identities, um, and, and and this this really does stem from like you know a personal um, experience as being a mixed race woman growing up in the Midwest, not really seeing a lot of um, visual imagery myself that represented like my narrative, you know. Yeah. And and, and I think we have this like. Um, all humans have this like root desire to belong, right? Um, but yes. if, if you're not seeing um, yourself uh, depicted in not just pop culture, but just, you know, you go to a museum and like yeah. what kind of stories are being represented. Yeah. Um, if you're not seeing yourself reflected in those images, um, you start to feel like maybe something is not normal about your lived experience. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, and then you and start it's real. These questions. Of course, yeah. That really, um, Growing up, like, that was a part of, like, my experience was feeling like maybe something was wrong with me. Or, uh, or, and so, and I think I, I'm trying to um, course correct that, that yeah. you know, and, and I think my paintings they ask a lot of questions um, of the of the viewer. Like, yeah. they, they ask us, you know, why, why are things this way? Why are we not comfortable with these types of images? Wow. Um, why, why do we not see these things regularly? But then also there's other, you know, other um, layers to the work that um, are personal, um, but also universal. You know, I talk about yeah. family, relationships, um, thing, other things that people can totally identify with and like very yeah. human yeah. Um, um, base uh, emotional stuff. I love it. There's also so much psychology behind it too. Yeah, like definitely. what are people going to say and think? How does one person perceive this like the ink blot, like what do you see type of a thing. Yeah. But yeah. for yours, it's clear cut, but there's so much story behind it. Well, right. You can totally take my paintings at face value. Like they're colorful, they're figurative. Like I think people do respond in a very visceral way to yeah. paintings of other people, you yeah. know? Um, but but yeah, there's all those other layers there that if you stick with the painting for a little bit longer, like it'll kind of access like other parts of you that you didn't really realize. Oh my gosh. Realize. We're about to be exposed. Seriously. Like, there's like a vulnerability. Yeah, I, I, I dig all of that. Because like when I'm making the work, I feel like super vulnerable, you know? So it's- Really? Oh, totally. Because, I mean, like I said, even though maybe I'm not the one that's being personally represented yeah. in the piece, like, my story is there. You know, like, that's yep. my connection to the work. It's yeah. like I totally identify with. Do you ever just, like, start laughing or start crying in the middle of your work? Have oh you ever done God. that? <laughs> not because, like, this damn uh, thing isn't working. Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> that would be, like, Frustration. Because, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, like, not everybody has, like, every day is a good painting day, you know. Um, See, even Miss yeah. Leslie has but a but bad I day. Cried. I have cried. Um, oh, of course. But, like, oh, other people have, have had really intense emotional responses to my to my work yeah. and I'm assuming that's because I also have that and that comes through the work you know if I was like oh somehow detached from the work I, I don't know if other people would have that it's there's a lot you know? of layers to the onion and yeah, that's so sure. cool to see like yeah. from one canvas to the final product what do you want to do like what's your goal long term you know, I don't even know <laughs> you know I you know I don't though like I'm kind of I'm like just going with it you know okay. like I I know that I want to be able to create art and have like a sustainable life that that makes that possible yeah I also my work is a way of like connecting with the community okay um and I really do care about equity um and again representing and uplifting um marginalized narratives that we don't typically see um or or supporting others yeah. who are doing that work you know like yeah. and I really care about that so um 
making my artwork and being able to do that, um, like I said, sustainably and like yeah. having this, this life. That's a good goal. Important. Um, yeah, but I also want to be able to support others. So like, that's why I do like community work while I'm on these boards, while I'm like working on all these organizations, teaching, like it's all related. Right? Well, your stories through the experiences that you come across, the people that you've met, the art that you've created, uh, sharing that and then bringing that to life. I mean, it's all the synergy all just kind of works together. We yeah. could sit here and talk all day from yes. fourth grade stories and on. But with all the experience that you've had over the last few years of your traveling and your grants and all the exposure you've had to the community, what would you go back and tell your 16 year old self if you could say anything, like either personally or professionally, but just about, here I'll narrow it down, more so yeah. the culture, especially, this could get emotional, like the diversity. Or 12. Yeah, I mean, well, and, like, that whole age, like, you're, like, well, I mean, I'm still trying to figure myself out. But, yeah. like, definitely back then, you know, like, you're very um, self-conscious and, like, I don't know. I wasn't very confident in, in the moves I was making, you okay. know. And, and I think um, I was always interested in art, like I said, but I never really saw myself. I didn't know what contemporary artists looked like. Mm. And the only artists that, like, you ever really taught in school were this very, like, Western – perspective old white dude and like and I just yeah. didn't really um see myself within that so I thought that like I couldn't be an artist I was like oh I can always paint and draw on the side but like I didn't think, didn't think. I never saw that like as a viable um career path yeah. for me so like that's probably what I would tell because I could have got a, maybe a, a more of a head start yeah like open uh, your eyes to yeah I yeah. still come across that at 33 I'm like <laughs> oh so this thing that you love to do you can like you can do totally this. You totally do it. Like if you if you like really care about it, I'm not gonna say. I would tell myself it's not gonna be easy, but oh. like you can do it if you really want to do it. You can do it, and um, and that's what I tell my students. Like I, I teach at Juxtaposition Arts, so I work with with a lot of young people there, and I also teach at the University of Minnesota, which. I always say that. I'm like, I don't know if anyone's ever told you, but you could actually do this. That's inspiring. You know, like, I love that you're in a place to even share those encouraging words in a s <gasps> messed up society right now, or very sensitive, I should say. I think that um, hearing these stories from people, whether that's at 16, 36, 66, we all need to hear, like, you can do this. Yeah. So with all the things that you're doing, there's been good times and there's been... struggle those it's not yeah. easy and I think um the biggest challenge is that you are really your own advocate you're not just the person who has to be inspired and make the creative work but you also have to advocate for yourself you got to be the one that's doing the artist talks the interviews you got to do all your scheduling you also have to answer all your emails you got to be able to book the shows you got to like write the grants you wear all these hats you have to wear so many hats and i think a lot of people don't realize and and, and i don't and and i'm not like a part of a band right like i don't have people that like we're all like in this at the same time mm -mm. like it's just me mm -hmm. i'm like the one person now i have a very supportive community friends family like of course um, other artists that like we're, we're all supportive um you know of each other but uh when it really comes down to it, I'm the only one that's actually doing that work. This is why you're here. You're a wonder woman. You're doing yeah. things. You're making moves. Yeah. And the struggle is real 99% yeah, of the time. It's definitely challenging. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to do the work and I want to do the work. So, um, yeah. And also, like, just knowing that, like, not every day is a good day. Like, I, sometimes I go into the studio and I'm like, damn it, I'm not going to paint today. I like make it all the way here and I'm like, I'm just going to answer emails. Yep. Okay. I just need to like be yep. okay with that. Yep. And I'll paint tomorrow. I'll paint you know? tomorrow. Yeah. What about the flip side? What's been like one thing? We go on forever, but I'm going to ask yeah. you to say just one thing that you're just so proud of that you've accomplished. I'm just proud that like I've crafted this life. Yes. You're I, doing it. Yeah. And it, that and, um, that like even though I'm very busy and I do wear a lot of hats, um, these are all hats that I want to wear. You know, like I every everything that I do is all 
in like a part of one machine, yeah. you know, yeah. and it feels really good. So like it's all things I love to do. Do you give yourself um, enough credit? No, does anyone? I'm going to start crying. Does anyone? No, this is going to get really emotional <laughs> real know, quick. I, no, of course not. No. Of course not. You know, I'm always like, oh, I could just, I could work harder. You know, everybody does But that. I love that you just said um, the fact that I'm doing all this. Yeah. It's yeah. sometimes, I think a lot of us, especially as women, need to just acknowledge that and just say, hey, mm-hmm. I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. It's not always good. It's not always right. Yeah. I and I still it. have time uh-huh. to take care of my dog. Yes. It's like I a like, baby. I like, I'm also a dog mom. And like, oh. despite all the, like, the professional and like artistic endeavors that I have, like I still have time to like just chill on the couch. What breed? My pup. He's a he's a he's a mixture. He's a rescue dog. So they don't really know what he is, but I think they they told me maybe Shih Tzu, Karen Terrier mix. He's oh cutie, just like a little guy. Yeah, he's can you tell my mom? A little baby, yes I can. <laughs> I can tell. He's a little guy. He really is though. That's why I talk to him. I'm not gonna do that voice right now. Hey, like no yes, judgment. My voice like goes real high <laughs> when I talk to him. See, I also sing to him. He loves Aww. it. Yeah. What can we as a community of women? Artists, entrepreneurs, society, culture, Twin Cities, and beyond do to support you? Showing up, you know, to shows, uh, making the work. You don't just want to, like, just make it and put it on the walls. You also want to, like, connect with the people that are looking mm. at it. You know, like, mm. there's there's definitely, like, a reciprocal relationship there, I think. Um, obviously, sharing, like, the work. So, yeah. like, if you, if you like one of my pieces, like, or, or my body of work, like, please tell yeah. people about it. Um, okay financially like that's that's an obvious one so you gotta pay right? your bills huh yeah i gotta like mm. eat that's, that's you don't have a solar powered lights no, that just stay on I don't. I don't. <laughs> pay her buy some buy some art yeah yeah and I, I i know like my paintings are super large and everybody has like space for a seven foot painting in their home but i do do yes. smaller work sometimes um no it's prints, your staple people you know? need to make room above their mantle <laughs> get a high ceiling home if you need to you need to buy a new house you do just to yeah, have your art easy. So how do we get in touch with you to figure out your shows, your art, to buy stuff, to pay you, to to like it, to support you? Um, So I have a website, lesliebarlowartist.com. Okay. And I also have a Facebook page, Leslie Barlow Art, like if you like Google that. uh, Or, um, yeah, and then uh, Instagram. I don't do the I don't do the tweets, the bird thing. The bird thing? Not everybody needs to. Yeah, it's too much. I can only handle... The, the two platforms. Hey, um, pick your battle. Yeah, and you can always email me. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm kind of slow to respond to emails, but I will get to you. Cool. If you have a project idea or maybe yeah. you want to commission me, I do yeah. I do um, a lot of commissions. I'm actually working on one right now for Hennepin County Medical Center. That's the one that you're in. I know. <laughs> I'm like, we're going to have to show that. big ass, like, seven foot. like work like yeah. that too so um yeah. if yeah organizations businesses if they want to buy my work or they're interested in a you know a commission project i'm definitely down for that okay you guys have some homework to do follow her on her website social media go to her shows pay her do all that stuff we're done with the conversation but will you hang out for a little activity yes all right that's a wrap <laughs> with miss leslie barlow all right so I'm nervous for this. You're going to dominate. But I think, no, you are. I think what we're going to do is do like a a two-minute sketch of one another. Okay. And then do a big reveal. Got it. Are you ready for this? No, I'm nervous right now. (laughs) My heart is pounding in my throat. Um, Okay. Uh, No, this will be good. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Like, what if I'm, what if yours looks like 10 times better than mine? Well, I do have tricks up my short sleeves here. I've already done your face twice, though. Crap. So. Excellent. Ready? Yes, I'm ready. Set. Oh, okay. Go. Oh, Lord. This is going to be hilarious. You may be impressed. You may want to hire me for some commissioned work. I might, actually. Okay, that's interesting okay this is hilarious I'm... also why is your hair so long and luscious You're making my job really difficult right now Did i give props to my hairstylist today fox face studios and st paul <laughs> also this is like a very interesting angle to attempt to draw your face in say for the record i've taken art classes interdesign design major 
Oh, goodness. <laughs> I feel like I'm offending you by making this. <laughs> Let me get your winged liner in there. <laughs> You're a beautiful girl. Aww. Aww. I'm, heat up. I'm having a moment. <laughs> so this. You stared into my eyes. For real? I'm admiring your makeup right now. I just need some purple marker. No. You look like a 13 year old version of yourself. Thank you. Drawing. That's fine. I don't know what you look like in here. <laughs> it's like Mona Lisa and Picasso had a painting, baby. Okay, should we count down? Yeah. Five, yep. four, whoop, what was that? Three. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> two. What the hell? One. Are you ready? Ready? Oh my God, uh, that looks just like me. No, it doesn't. Well, this does not look like you. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did here? Oh. Okay, well, you also have like the lines in there, like the eyes and the symmetry. It, and It's really not that great. Can I keep that? Yeah, you can. This is so cute. $500. You can burn this one. <laughs> happy, happy oh, portraiting. Oh, but you got my, you got my nose I got piercing. your nose ring. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so eyeliner. now that that part is done, I'm gonna stop sweating and put you back on the spotlight. Are you ready for Heat to Talk Trivia? Yes, yes, I am. Girl, I'm gonna ask some questions. Okay, what if I fail? You're not gonna do, you're not gonna fail. Okay. But let's talk about art <laughs> trivia. I had to, I had to come out oh, of the shit. gate. Okay, so 59% of Twin Cities metro area residents reported attending a live arts and culture event last year. I believe it. Okay, compare that to Chicago. Is that a higher percentage or a lower percentage? Higher. It is. Yeah, I know, because oh. the metro area, like we are killing it when it comes to the arts. Like, we are so yeah, good. So good. Chicago yeah. was a 47%, and then um, we also beat New York, which was a 50%. 50, 50%. Fun fact, Utah was the top state at, 20, at 61%. Uh, wow. It's too much numbers for me. Okay. Keep it going. <laughs> what is the name of the largest annual open art studio tour in the U.S.? Art of World. It is Art of World. That's because I participated in that. I know. I also Googled <laughs> it. Okay. I love that we have that here. <sighs> yeah, that's awesome. They're amazing. We have such an awesome arts mm -hmm. culture. Okay, last one. Name this female painter. She is an African-American contemporary painter, silhouettist, printmaker, installation artist, and a filmmaker. She explores race, gender, sexuality, violence, and identity in her work, much like some lovely lady I know. She's also best known for her room-sized tableau of black cut paper silhouettes. Oh, that's an easy one. Carol Walker. <laughs> you know it. Carol <laughs> Walker. She... Well, I mean, like, I was like, this is describing a lot of people. Yeah, but, okay, yeah. yeah. There we go. Oh, the Minnesota kicked yeah. in. So she had her work on display at our very own Walker Art Center in mm -hmm. 2007. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she's a bomb-ass lady. So are you. And I'm so happy you were here today. I'm going to hug it out. Yay. Thank you for thank being you. a of freaking bomb-ass no, Wonder Woman. For, like having a platform like this for us to, like, share our... My sure, pleasure. Stuff. All right, you guys know what to do. Subscribe to Heated Talk below. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and follow her everywhere. Until next time, keep it real. Oh